I absolutely love estate cars. I've grown up with them, I love them, and I don't like SUVs, you know that if you've watched this show. But the thing is, is in the early days, you couldn't always buy estate car versions of the car you wanted. Manufacturers didn't do them. So if I said to you BMW Touring, you'd know I was talking about estate BMWs. But before BMW made their own estates, some people, some very wealthy people, commissioned the build of such cars. And one of them is sitting in this garage right here on a very cold, wet day in Manchester. So in this episode, we're gonna be looking at the car in here, talking to the owner, and hopefully pulling it out. It's exceptionally rare. It could be the rarest car we've ever had on the Barn Find episodes. So I'm Johnny Smith, and you're watching The Late Break Show. Now, Harry, the chap that owns this car and has owned it for over 40 years, he's quite old now and he's very cold. So he's gonna be, I'm gonna be talking to him inside the house most of the time and he'll pop his head out periodically. He's given me the keys and uh, he's put the kettle on. So I'm hoping we can see the car. Oh, gosh, right. It's been used as a storeroom. It's in a partially dismantled state. Not a great deal, like clusters, bumpers, but everything he says is here. He's just kind of used it as a bit of a shed in the meantime, and he did say he thinks the garage has a leak, and it does. These are not BMW wheels. These are off Harry's daily driver, which is a Mercedes C-Class compressor. I'm gonna access the car better before I chat about it, but needless to say, I have never seen one of these before. Um, and obviously Harry was much more able-bodied when he started to, to strip this and his situation was different. Uh, he had to quit his job to look after his wife, who sadly passed away. And it is a shame to see it like this because this is such a unicorn of a car. This coach-built estate is based upon the E3 series saloon, the predecessor to the 5 series made from 1968 to 1977. Engines range between 2.3 and 3.3 litre for this four-door and the E9 CSL-shaped coupe counterpart, one of which I featured in a barn find in 2023. It isn't clear how many right-hand drive coach-built estates were made by FLM Panelcraft. It's thought to be no more than a dozen, but there's only one on the road at present, and all of these were commissioned as a joint venture between BMW UK concessionaires. These are not the same as the few BMWs converted in-house as racing team service cars seen here in the pictures. And FLM Panelcraft history is a bit patchy, to say the least. So you can see the tailgate has been sitting, I think, on its own struts for all this time. And one of the difficulties when you're constructing a coach-built estate car is whose tailgate you use. Do you, do you use your own window? Do you use your own tailgate? Or do you take it off an existing car and try and disguise it like TVI used to do with light clusters? So actually this part, this really lower portion is off the saloon boot of the original BMW. And the hatch is actually off an Austin Maxi, would you believe? And Harry remembered this because he said, I replaced it because when I bought the car at 10 years old, it was rotten then. So I found another Maxi, not, e, not our hard in the 80s. And he's actually, he brazed it on, he said. So, I mean, you can see it's rotten here, but that's where the Maxi, Austin Maxi tailgate ends. And then the, the lip of the BMW boot is kind of married onto it. A lot of riveting went on with... Uh, these coach-built cars in the 70s, things weren't as well coach-built as they probably should, which meant that they tended to be rock boxes where everything joins. Uh, that pillar there, you see, is the crucial pillar that's totally different. I don't know if they used the back of a maxi. I don't think they did, or whether that was all bespoke. I'm not digging for gold dust because I basically have already found automotive gold dust. That is, that is that rare. 
You've probably heard of other interesting shooting brakes made by companies like Radford, Crayford. There's been Aston Martin shooting brakes over the years, Bentley shooting brakes, Rolls, uh, the Lynx Aventa, which is mega, the, the Jaguar XJS. There was one of those in a recent car cave that I did. I'll put a link above my head for that, that was very cool. So there's been lots of interesting coach-built shooting brakes and estates. Um, there's in fact uh, one made by the same company that I think made this, FLM Panelcraft. Uh, they also did a Rover. But I'm not going to talk too much about that now. I know what that is. I'm sure that's the air cleaner assembly for this car. Worries me slightly because that means that the air cleaner might not be on it, which means the carburetor throats are exposed. The amount of dirt and damp in here, that doesn't bode particularly well, but might be speaking too soon. I see treasure, Captain. I see some treasure. She be a coach built estate car. Some say they call them station wagon. Some call them estates. All I know is bloody rare. That's what I reckon, mate. That's the number plate of this car, BMW 25L. Harry's very protective over his number plate. He's had offers to sell it in the past, but he will not split it from the car. First of all, Harry, thank you for letting me come and have a look at your car. You're welcome. Um, I have never seen one before. Good. I, I've, <laughs> I've, I've, I've never seen one. I knew about different coach-built estate cars over the yeah. years. And I've seen a later BMW um, estate in Norway, so it was left on drive. Norway? Norway. I don't think it originally went to Norway, but it, I saw it at a, at a car show in Norway. Oh. This, this is a different ballpark. This thing is incredibly rare. Uh, I'm guessing you've not seen another? No, I've never seen another, no. <laughs> no, I've seen a, a 520 and a... 5.30. Yeah. I've, well, I've only seen one of them. And you've had it how long? Uh, 1st of November 80, 1982. 82. So you've yeah. had it over 40 years. 40 years, yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's my baby. Wow. And how did, you, how did you find this thing? I was working in the garage... And my youngest brother, my late youngest brother, David, he's a mechanic, was a mechanic. And he rang me up and he went, are you still looking for a BM? I said, yeah, but David, I want an estate because of the caravan. Yeah, you were towing a caravan, weren't you? Towing a caravan, yeah. Yeah. He said, your dreams come true. I said, what do you mean? He said, there's one not a mile away from where you are now, from your garage. I said, what's wrong with it? He said, it's burnt out. <laughs> I said, well, what good, what good is a burnt out car to me? He said, it's only burnt out under the bonnet. It's nothing that you can't do. Okay. So I Because you were a mechanic as well? Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 I jumped in my car, shot down, had a look at it, and I thought, oh, my God, this is a disaster. But it's workable. Time you strip it back, it'll be nice. So it had gone into the garage for a new radiator because it was boiling up. The garage put a new radiator in it. The young mechanic jumped in it to take it for a ride round to get it up to temperature. Apparently it backfired up the carburetor and set the air filter on fire. Right. Set the car on fire. So the fire brigade was called for, they came with the magic rush killer, the foam, the white foam. Yeah. That, yeah. Jacked the bonnet up and crucified under the bay, in the right. engine bay. So even down the carburetor, they went down there with that. Whoa, with the foam? With the foam, so that would blow that yeah. engine up. Yeah. 
that and all the wiring just melted. Yep. So it, it so, they put the fire out. Oh yeah, they put the fire out. It, it stopped it spreading, and I went right. I said, "What do you want for it?" Make me an offer. I said, "No." I said, "You must have a figure in mind." He said, oh, "I was hoping to get about four hundred for it." So we arted and bartered, and I thought, "Oh, four hundred? That's not bad. It's only basically labour." So I gave him four hundred quid for it. David, my youngest brother, he'd he'd got a car that had been written off at the back end, and that was a two fifty. So he said, "You can have that." Right. He so said, he, I, he needed other bits, did he? Yeah, he needed um, two or three doors and a boot lid. That's what he wanted for his. Right. That he was doing up. And that was a five twenty. Did everything that it needed. Yeah. Um, tuned it all up. So we said we were going to have a, a memorable holiday. So we said we'll go to South of France. Wow. Do you know how many of these they made? Do you know much about the coach built part of it? The lad that I bought it off, he reckoned. He was told there was either 63 or 68. But I've never seen 63 or 68. I've never seen any. No. That's taken a little bit longer than we anticipated. I think even Harry didn't realise how much of a dumping ground he'd used the capacious boot of the BMW 4. I mean, this is, you can see the seats have been pushed forward here and most of the carpet's intact. And I wanted to try and show that. There's so many bits of DIY and remnants of odd jobs in there. So I found the badge, which should go on the tailgate here. And obviously this is as, this is as far up as, the gas struts still work. This headlining has come down, unfortunately. Uh, so we're trying to show you as best as we can the condition of the interior and I found a number of lights, speaker grills, door panels, there's some new brakes to go on it. It's, it's difficult conditions because it's so wet at the front. I mean, it's like two inches deep in water as, as hard as I've swept it out. But look, look what's really cool. I know I showed it earlier. This is the other real party piece of this particular car. This is the original uh, registration which still lives with the car and Harry's got his name on there and when I when I dug out the bumper with it on and showed it through the window to Harry he was like oh I haven't seen that in years. It's kind of sad to see it like this it's, it's really sad to see how much moisture is coming in uh, at the back end of the garage. I worry about the underneath of it if it's been sat in water for years of its life that will not bode well. These models rotted at the best of times. Just put the back seat up and looking at these door cards that have been removed, they're on the seat there. And as I lifted the back seat up, a huge rat walked out and it's still in there. Uh, so I've, I'm ar I don't want to kill it. I want to coax it out. I'm armed with a, a, a crutch. I just want to see if we can get it to just go away. Uh, but I notice a lot of mess, like rodent mess in there. It's such a shame. What we need is a bit of sparkle to keep all my fans interested, not your boring, monotonous tones droning on. So despite the fact that these door cards were removed for whatever Harry was doing, and they've warped, the upholstery does not look too bad. But um, yeah, these, these are the sorts of things which are unobtainium, I would have thought. And they are salvageable, you've just got to kind of press them gently to reinvigorate them and the boot space is huge now that you see it like this and of course this headlining is all bespoke when the car was converted this pillar onwards um, there were options like extra courtesy lights was an option on the the coach built estate tow bar was um, extra and there are a couple more things that i read up about but information on these is quite scarce I'm going to put my hand down here and these are the, I reckon these are the headlights. 
Now, someone's taken the carpets out. Uh, the transmission tunnel carpets are still there, but the floor carpets are gone, which might have done it favours because um, might have meant that moisture doesn't sit. I don't think the floors are that bad. I just worry about I worry about what's going on under the front end because that's where all the moisture is. It smells of smells of piss. Behold the long roof. So here's the shape of the roof. You can see the aluminium um, extrusions which hold the tailgate on. Full length Wabasto sunroof, which is pretty common for these. And this would have been covered in vinyl. You can see where all the glue has been scraped uh, and down those back pillars um, where it's missing because they used to cover up all their coach building sins with vinyl. And it was the 70s where vinyl roofs were still in vogue, I think. And that's that window that Harry thought is, it is smashed but the frame is still intact, which is good because you wouldn't be able to get the frame. Everything he's taken off, he's, he's kept. Is that another badge? It's another badge, another two and a half litre badge. But all the ashtrays, bits of trim, it's all in here, on here. You can see, oh, what was that? Oh. I'm, I'm not quite concentrating because I think I can hear a rat. There's rat poo down there and it's fresh. And I've heard they can jump. I'll take all this bits of gazebo or whatever it is out here because then you can see the true. Maybe we're giving the rat a bad name. Maybe actually the rat wasn't interested in eating the BMW upholstery at all. If you bought me a Rolls Royce, of course, none of this would have happened. The last time I was stood in quite deep garage water was a barn find with a Sierra XR4i, which was very low mileage and it could have been beautiful, but unfortunately the, the moisture had got it, which is sad. I'm stood on a paint pot, just so my boots don't get submerged. I realized the bonnet has been, un, it's been unbolted. So the radiator here is resting on top can you see the, the fur on top of the radiator? That's really quite scary. I think that's chunks of a creature. Or their, or their spores. Either way, I don't really want them near my mouth. It has got an engine in it, but it's missing a number of ancillaries. It looks like it's still got kind of ash on it or some sort of corrosion. I don't know, but we're not gonna be trying to run it today. No carb, no inlet manifold, no radiator, no water pipes, no ignition system. So there's a number of things missing. But what we'll, and I know the headlights are out of it. I can see that because I know Harry put them in the boot, taking, starting to take it off to repaint it again and repair it for the second time. Because remember he repainted it in 83, not long after he got it, because he wanted it to be mint. But this was used as a family car. Right. I'm going to try and show you, you can see how, how deep the water is, unfortunately it's a good inch deep. But down here in this cupboard are the missing ancillaries. You see the grills, the light surrounds at the top there, and then the twin carbs down below. And then there's some other stuff I think that might be um, brake master cylinder and actually some window wiper scrapers. I'm going to do a bit of parkour so you can see, hopefully, the bonnet's very, very rotten. Uh, the front panel, Harry did say when we were having a chat with him that he knew that was rotten. But the front end of the car is going to be easier to repair than the back in so much as the front end isn't coach built, albeit quite a rare BMW now. Um, and we know they like to rot in period. I'll see if I can see if I can film underneath it. I tried to get as close under the car as I could, bearing in mind it was swamped in water. And actually, 
The floor pans and the sills don't look too bad, which is great, really. I know the front end of the car is rotten, but that is the easier part of the car to try and restore. The back end is obviously the ultra rare bit. And it is a real shame that I couldn't get the car out into the daylight to have a closer look at it. But the reality is the brakes were completely seized on and it's an automatic and it was locked in park. And of course, it's missing engine parts. So I couldn't even think about trying to strike the engine up today. Right, I'm going to try and lower the tailgate just to show you what it looks like with the, with the, I don't want to force it. It's been stuck in one position for a very, very long time. Look, and I'll go and get the bumper and show you that. Just to give you an idea of what we're looking at. Something like that, I would have thought. This car really, really needs properly resurrecting. Weird to think that I'm pretty sure BMW didn't make a factory touring, a factory estate car, until the late 80s. I want to say the later part of the 80s with the E33 series. So this predates that by a long way. This is a 1973 car, but there were also coach builders making other estate BMWs prior to this, as far back as the mid 60s. I've only seen one of these for sale in the UK in recent time. It's very hard to know what it's worth. Harry will sell this car to the right person for the right money, but it has to keep the original number plate on it. And really, I would love to see this car being rebuilt because it deserves to be. It should not be in here any longer in this horribly wet garage and it shouldn't really have a rat living in it. At some point in this car's life, it took his family to Saint-Tropez for a glamorous holiday. It is a bit sad to see it like this, isn't it? The service history, there's, 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 a, there's not a great deal. We've got the, uh, I saw, um, you've got the original, oh, owner, oh, oh, you've got the, the original, original owner's manual, I think. Yeah. Oh, that's there. Uh, yeah. The owner's handbook, which is yeah. lovely. That's great. So you talked about this off camera. This little, this little note is from Greater Manchester Police. Yeah. You, tell me about the, what the deal is with this. Well, I was the steward in walked in Royal British Legion. Right. And I got a phone call one day asking, uh, was I the owner of a BMW with the registration number BMW 25L? And I said, yes, I am. He says, well, somebody has been trying to retax a car with that number plate. I saw the bent. I said, because that's my plate. Nobody else's. Mm. He said, it's a dealer from up Cumbria somewhere. He said, we've been chasing him for over two years and we just cannot pin him. He said, but could, is there any chance we can come and see the... I said, of course you can. I came to the house, got the garage key, opened it up, whizzed it open, and he went, oh, my God, he says... How long has it been in here? I saw it's been in a good few years. Yeah. He said, I can see that. He said, you can't see it for cobwebs. And what, what year was this? 2000. Is that's, that when it was? That's the year, yeah. So it's the 4th of May, 2000. Please contact Detective Jason Ruff at Vehicle Fraud and Auto Crime Unit, Bradford yeah. Park, Manchester. Mm. My final question so, really is about like, you obviously started taking bits off it to rebuild it again. To rebuild, that's when Beryl became. So so how long ago were we talking about now? God. She got the lung cancer in 1988, I think it would be. Right. 
Well, it would be 1988, thereabouts. Right, so, you, so when your wife was diagnosed with that, mm -hmm. and you said to me that she she had, well, she managed to fight three bouts yeah, of cancer? three bouts of cancer. But you, but you stopped what you were doing for your job and you became her sort I of full-time... I put my job in. Yeah, mm. and became her full-time carer. Yeah. So that kind of got put on hold. Yeah. You'd started taking a few I bits off. I had started, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. it's so wow. So that, I mean, that was a long time ago, right? Late yeah. late eighties. Yeah. Goodness, and it's been there ever since. Mm. Gosh, you 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 wish you were sort of well enough to be able to crack oh, on. I wish I was. Because you said you you've done numerous jobs on cars and used to be able to pull engines out no problem. And... Yeah, you used to. I mean, me and old David, you think nothing of it. Were you? I mean, we started me and David. Both car fanatics, both mechanics. We used to lay on our, on our backs in, in a dirty shed. Oh, on the farm? On the farm, yeah. on the farm. Yeah. Ripping the gearboxes out and engines and all. We'd done it all. Yeah, yeah. That's brilliant. The, real, the original mucky, mucky pair. So what do you think you're going to do with this car? Absolutely. If somebody offers me a good price, and it'll be a good price, offered yeah. me a good price for it, I will let it go on one condition. There's going to be a condition. Mm -hmm. That number plate stays on that car. Okay. Because I don't want to sell it and then see that number plate on another car. No. It would be lovely to see that car rebuilt and yeah, out it would. the road, wouldn't it? I really, I really hope that you know we can we can help you find a new buyer mm. for the car, and someone that's going to resurrect it. Yeah, I feel very privileged to have seen this car today. That's been squirrelled away out of sight for so long, and Harry is so protective over it. And it's been great to hear his story about this car being used as the family car, and everyone being so fascinated by it. And what a unicorn it is! It's been a little bit less hands-on for me uh, today, this particular episode, because the engine is incomplete, the car's brakes are totally seized, and clearly it's uh, difficult to get everything out of the interior because there's rats in it. <laughs> so it's been a bit of an interesting one, but I hope you have really enjoyed seeing what is an incredibly rare car. And if this car comes up for sale, you'll be the first to know. If you haven't already subscribed to The Late Break Show, subscribe. If you want to become a Patreon and support us that way, you'll get easy early access to videos like this and blogs from me, and sometimes videos that aren't seen on YouTube. If you've got a car that's in a shed, in a barn, in a hedge, on a drive that you think is of significant interest to us, get in touch. There's an email address in the description below. Let us know where you are in the world, share some backstory and some photos. Cheers. <laughs>